When we think of tattoos, earplugs and multiple piercings, teeth filing, and similar forms of body ornamentation, the first thing that comes to mind is, ouch. We think of them as markers of belonging to a particular clique, gang, or subculture, and these are prohibited in formal settings. But leafing through 16th century Spanish chronicles on the allure of the early Filipinos, one would realize how commonplace these practices used to be. So, what brought about the shift? Many of us suffer for beauty, but can we rival the lengths our ancestors underwent to achieve it? The history of objects shows how our customs and values have changed over time. This is Object Rewind. The Spaniards extensively documented their encounters with the early Filipinos, giving us an idea of their customs and appearance prior to colonization. The accounts of Pigafetta, Morga, and Alcina are just among the few that detail the similarities and distinctions between the peoples of the archipelago, immediately conveying one's class status and kinship were attire and body ornamentation, an astonishing practice to the Western visitors. Some of the first peoples the Spaniards encountered were the Visayans, pertaining to those who inhabited both the Visayas and parts of northeastern Mindanao. Also called Pintados, these men and some women had heavily tattooed bodies. The women practiced a form of head binding, as receding foreheads and flat noses were the beauty standard of the time. There were elaborate displays of jewelry made of tortoiseshell, ivory, and most remarkably, gold. Having multiple ear piercings, both among women and men, was common. They wore earplugs and rings to enlarge the earlobes. The pamarang was the largest kind, and among the elite, were made of gold, pounded into thin sheets with intricate repoussé and granulation. Piercings were made as early as a few days after childbirth, increasing in diameter with each life stage. One of the distinct body modification practices that struck the colonizers was tooth filing. Sharpening teeth was widespread and considered beautiful, not only among the Visayans, but also up north in the Tagalog, Cordillera, and Bicol regions, and further south among the forest and mountain-dwelling peoples of Mindanao. Some groups also practiced teeth staining and even gold pegging, the excruciating procedure of drilling holes into the teeth to insert dental ornaments. The belief among those who practiced teeth filing for aesthetic purposes was, the closer your teeth were to its natural form, the less appealing they were. Dental ornamentation created a distinction between humans and animals. Save for the indigenous communities that resisted and avoided conversion to world religions, Filipinos lost these traditional practices as Islam and Christianity replaced standards of beauty and modesty. The natural and the immaculate were favored, while original notions of beauty were considered excessive, pagan, and savage. To a degree, these views persist, and the act of body ornamentation is considered a form of rebellion or liberation from the status quo. Amidst the stigma attached to tattoos, piercings, and body modification, there is a resurgence and increasing tolerance toward these non-traditional forms of bodily expression. But knowing the history of what our ancestors looked like, couldn't one argue that nothing could be more traditional than a tattooed arm and decked out ears? <laughs>